my audible and is the screen visible somebody please reply me on the live chat so that i know <laughs> hey dr ravi chaudhary thanks for that lovely comment of yours now oh, that's sweet of you so we'll wait for a minute or two before we can start hey dr ravi chaudhary Thanks for the lovely comment of yours. Okay. We are starting. I'm just waiting for a minute or two. Hello. आपकी आवाज थोड़ी कट के आ रही है क्या कह रहे थे आप हाँ हाँ वो हो गया मुझे मालूम है वो कर दिया मैंने हाँ मुझे पता लग गया था मुझे पता लग गया था ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है मैं देख रहा हूँ okay. Right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, all. Good evening, all. Good evening, Dr. Medico Anurag Ji. Good evening, Dr. Anish Arevrat. Good evening, Dr. Sarina K S R. If you use Michelle, Dr. Anurag. Sorry, Anugrah. What a nice name, buddy. Dr. Mayur Mehta. Dr. Lovely Sahu. Dr. Maya B Gaming. Hello, buddy. Lucky Fifty Five. Dr. Hashim. Dr. Heli. Dr. Hajinder. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, buddy. Good evening. Good evening. Just give me a second. Just give me a minute, and we are starting. Good evening, Dr. Jaskar. Good evening, Dr. S. B. R. A. R. A. B. Dr. Sukhad. Hello, Nidhi. Dr. Oid John. Dr. Arabrat. Good evening. So fine, we are starting. Fine, we are starting. Fine. And this, these are all the topics which we'll be studying in the topic of uh, hepatobiliary. So again, that's going to be a concise class. Fine. Concise class, and I'll try to make it as concise as possible. Fine. That's that. That has been my problem. That I have not been uh, not been able to make things more concise. Now you see here, liver. 
Now, when we talk about the liver, we should be aware about two things. One is the Cantilee's line. You see, when we see this, this is the anatomical right lobe. And when we see this, this is the anatomical left lobe. Fine. But there is a line. There's a line called Cantilee's line running from inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava. Fine. Here. To the gallbladder fossa. Fine. To the gallbladder fossa. And this line is Cantilee's line. Fine. So this will be functional right lobe. This will be functional left lobe. Right lobe and left lobe. See here the Cantilee's line running from inferior vena cava to the gallbladder fossa. Gallbladder fossa. Fine. So that this brown colored thing is the functional right lobe and the yellow colored thing is the functional left lobe. Dr. Jaka Abraham, hello. Good to be with you right now so rex cantilese line rex cantilese line okay now you see in anatomy you should be aware about this structure the hepatododenal ligament hepatododenal ligament so whenever there is any kind of bleeding coming from the liver this is the structure which we press this is the structure which we press and the name of the maneuver is pringle maneuver all kind of bleeding would stop if you press this ligament because this has got all the vascular structure this has got all the vascular structure speaking about the blood supply we know from our knowledge of anatomy that uh, the liver has got dual blood supply one is the hepatic artery that will supply 20 to 30 percent of blood to the liver fine and this blood in the hepatic artery this is rich in oxygen but comparatively poor in nutrients poor in nutrients fine the main blood supply of the liver main blood supply of the liver is the portal vein main blood supply of the liver is the portal vein fine so portal vein will supply around 70 percent of blood to the liver now this blood is nutrient rich nutrient rich fine but is comparatively poor in oxygen that doesn't mean it will totally lack oxygen that doesn't mean it will totally lack oxygen it has oxygen but less of it less of it fine so what i'm trying to say let's say while you're performing cholecystectomy by mistake you uh, ligate a big branch let's say you ligate right hepatic artery right hepatic artery fine nothing will happen to the liver nothing will happen to the liver at least for the short term in the long term it may cause fibrosis that two reports have been there fine but usually what happens is portal vein will take up the function of the hepatic artery portal vein will take up the function of the hepatic artery fine so nothing practically happens there nothing practically happens there fine again what I want to show you here is this area called bare area, bare area, fine. It's not wise to call this bare area because this area is not totally bare. This area still has got the capsule of the liver, but this has no peritoneal cover, no peritoneal cover, fine. Again, this bare area, this bare area, so bare area. is present on the superior surface of the liver present on the superior surface of the liver superior surface of the liver right now this is the site of porto cable anastomosis where the portal circulation fine portal circulation and the systemic circulation the anastomose fine anastomose this is the site where the peritoneal layer peritoneal layer is absent fine so that means liver is in communication with pleural cavity pleural cavity fine so infection of the liver can transmit can be transmitted to the pleural cavity through the space bare area again i told you anatomically anatomically this is not the correct expression because still it is covered by the capsule of the liver covered by the capsule of the liver so this is more prominent over right sub diaphragmatic 
diaphragmatic space right subdiaphragmatic space fine now without wasting any time because you know anatomy is not our food we move to the next thing that is the main topic for today i mean uh, one of the main topics for today that happens to be the biliary atresia biliary atresia now you see what will be there in the biliary atresia see here this part the ducts bile ducts both inside and outside they will fail to develop they will fail to develop fine atresia fine even if they develop there will be progressive occlusion progressive occlusion progressive occlusion so different patterns are there different patterns of the involvement different pattern of the involvement are there now those of you who say that we don't want to read anything else which is uh, not uh, of supreme importance just remember one thing biliary atresia treatment is kasai operation but some extra details some extra details you know uh, here or there they are not uh, you know what uh, they're, they're not of much harm to you fine so so there is progressive obliteration progressive obliteration of both intra and extra hepatic intra and extra hepatic bile ducts bile ducts fine you know technically even the biliary radicals even the biliary radical that means a small bile duct small bile duct they are also affected they are also affected fine now how will the child present how will the child present so clinical feature the child will present with the features of worsening jaundice and the features of portal hypertension and the features of portal hypertension ultrasound may show absent or really small gallbladder absent or really small gallbladder fine now the diagnostic investigation is liver biopsy diagnostic investigation is liver biopsy liver biopsy fine now if by any chance this investigation is inconclusive what do we use we use an investigation called decida scan investigation called decida scan decida scan fine so what is decida di iso profile immuno diacetic acid scan fine dipropyl amino diacetic acid scan amino diacetic acid scan so this is selectively concentrated and excreted in the liver fine decida like this now you can see that's a normal decida you see this dot the bright dot this is the gallbladder this is the gallbladder so if the gallbladder is visible fine your diagnosis is ruled out your diagnosis is ruled out that means there is no biliary atresia the bile ducts are normally functioning the bile ducts are normally functioning fine decida scan what is the treatment the treatment of choice here is kasai operation kasai operation kasai operation fine now even when you perform the kasai operation even when you perform the kasai operation fine liver transplant may still be required liver transplant may still be required because you know i told you that uh, kasai operation hida scan anugraha ji hida scan we use for acute cholecystitis we use for acute cholecystitis fine hida scan we use for acute cholecystitis they are practically the same they are practically the same only thing the isotope used is slightly different fine isotope used is slightly different practically they are same that that, that is used for uh, acute cholecystitis acute cholecystitis hida scan one you are talking about fine hida scan now we move to the next thing that is a cholecystitis you see here here the bile duct is 
dilated bile duct is massively dilated bile duct is massively dilated fine massively dilated fine you see these are the different type these are the different type fine so there was uh, alonzo less classification which was later modified by todani alonzo less classification modified by todani fine you see here now they ask you which type of cyst are more common fine so the mnemonic there is 143 our generation knows the uh, meaning of 143 fine so you know when we were back there in college this victim was very famous uh, 143 it's it's for i love you fine so that's what they say so one is the most common one is the most common second is the sorry type 4 is the second most common and type 3 is the third most common type 3 is the third most common so one which involves the the intradudinal part of the common bile duct common bile duct fine so what is this next topic that is poly Doctal cyst, colidocal cyst. So colidocal cyst is cystic enlargement of the bile duct. Cystic enlargement of the bile duct. Fine. So this could either occur due to chronic obstruction or it could occur due to reflux of reflux of. pancreatic enzymes pancreatic enzymes so these are basically hypothesis i mean nothing could be conclusively proved nothing could be conclusively proved so they are common in the first decade of life common in the first decade of life fine so clinical feature is a triad triad of pain abdominal mass and jaundice pain abdominal mass and jaundice fine so alonzo less alonzo less classification and todani modification so most common type is type 1 second most common is type 4 and the third most common is type 3 third most common is type 3 first investigation usually is the ultrasound investigation of choice here remains the mrcp investigation of choice remains the mrcp treatment fine treatment because you know if you see here correctly extra hepatic ducts are involved extra hepatic ducts they are involved in the type 1 in the type 1 so what do we do we say okay they are not normal remove them they are not normal remove them connect the liver and jejunum directly connect the liver and jejunum directly fine so treatment is hepatic co the genostomy naturally after you excise after you excise the liver after you excise the cyst after you excise the cyst in the type 5 in the type 5 predominantly intra hepatic involvement is seen and that is known as carolis disease so here the only thing which you need to do is liver transplantation only thing which you need to do is liver transplantation liver transplantation you see the caroli disease predominantly intrahepatic involvement is seen so you cannot do anything there only thing is you need to perform the liver transplant liver transplant right liver transplant now we move to the next topic there that is a liver abscess liver abscess fine so it could be either pyogenic liver abscess caused by the pus forming bacteria it could be amoebic liver abscess it could be a fungal abscess which is caused by candida species and rarely 
very rarely it is caused by tuberculosis tubercular abscess can form tuberculosis can present anywhere in the body can present anywhere in the body no area is immune no area is protesting uh, remain remain fine no area is immune fine so now we are going to read the hepatic liver abscess hepatic sorry hepatic abscess that is caused by the bacteria so this is biogenic liver abscess biogenic liver abscess you all know that liver is the most common site of intra abdominal abscess i mean if any organ is involved if any organ is involved if any organ is involved fine now type 4 type 4 what we can do is we can just excise the cyst we can just excise the cyst and we can do the anastomosis we can do anastomosis to the lower end of intrahepatic cyst fine because you see here now good question i'm glad you are asking questions now fine you see here type 4 So in type four, what we can do is we can excise the cyst, fine. And then you see these two cysts where the cursor of my mouse is. We may join the jejunum to these two. We may join the jejunum to these two. See the difference between type four and type five. Type four, both extra and intrahepatic involvement is seen, fine. Type five, entire area of liver is involved. Entire area of liver is involved, fine. Now let's say. this intrahepatic involvement is uh, is not uh, widespread it is just uh, limited to one lobe we can cut that lobe we can cut that lobe fine so technically i mean uh, yes you say that at in some of the cases you might need liver transplant but not in all the cases here in all the cases you will need liver transplant fine here what you can do is again did you get the point uh, dr hashim we can bring the jejunum over here and join it to the lower part join it to the lower part of these dilated cyst these dilated cyst fine so very rarely yes if the involvement uh, intrahepatic is widespread then we can go for it otherwise it is not required otherwise it is not required usually fine now so the most common abscess of liver is biogenic liver abscess most common abscess is biogenic liver abscess how can the bacteria reach here how can the bacteria reach here most commonly they reach the liver through the bile duct through the bile duct through the bile duct fine when there is infection in the bile duct and the most common cause of infection in the bile duct is stones in case of indian or any other asian population fine while it is cholangio carcinoma cholangio carcinoma in the western population in the western population in the western population so the second most common route by which the infection can enter the liver is the portal vein is the portal vein third most common is the hip hepatic artery is the hepatic artery especially when your patient is in generalized sepsis septicemia septicemia i'm actually very glad when you guys ask some questions you know that the, uh, if you have the doubt the same doubt must be there in some other students also so if you ask doubt not only your doubt is cleared but uh, the doubt of other people are also clear doubt of other people are also clear fine now next next it may occur as direct extension direct extension from the nearby structure direct extension from the nearby structure for example if your patient has empyema gallbladder if your patient has empyema gallbladder if your patient has sub diaphragmatic abscess remember the morrison's pouch the hepatorenal fossa that is the most dependent part that is the most dependent part in a horizontal patient so if your patient is horizontal 
the bus will trickle down to that space bus will trickle down to that space fine so infection can also travel from pleura fine next infection can reach the liver infection can reach the liver by penetrate trauma penetrating trauma fine even the blunt trauma blunt trauma you see it can cause accumulation of blood that is hematoma formation hematoma formation fine now that hematoma might get infected most common clinical feature is fever apart from, <coughs> apart from that your patient has pain now this thing you must keep in mind jaundice is present in at least 25 percent of the patient jaundice will be present in at least 25 percent of the patient so most common lab investigation which is abnormal is alkaline phosphatase levels alkaline phosphatase levels which are elevated alkaline phosphatase levels which are uh, elevated which are elevated fine investigation the first investigation and the investigation of choice is ultrasound you can also get the ct scan done which will show double target sign double target means there will be abscess cavity like this and around the abscess there will be erythema there will be erythema you know that is normal reaction by the body normal reaction by the body charcot tried pain fever and jaundice pain fever and jaundice fine that is present if your patient has cholangitis if your patient has cholangitis fine yes 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 Jawahar ji it is common let's say so the most common age is middle ages yes it is common in alcoholics fine but amoebic liver abscess amoebic liver abscess that is also common in alcoholics fine that is the difference there because you know i was coming to this i was coming to this because here we wanted to confirm the two uh, the two uh, abscess side by side so that time i will discuss it you don't have to worry about it but i'm glad you raised this query i'm glad you raised this query so keep on raising such kind of queries you know sometimes what may happen is i may miss i may miss some of the things so i am glad that you are there to fill it up fine so treatment is antibiotics plus percutaneous drainage using a big tail catheter let me just show you a big tail catheter you see these are all the areas from where the infection can enter that is the confirmatory investigation dr jawaharji that is a confirmatory investigation that is the confirmatory investigation confirmatory investigation Right. Now you see this hepatorenal fossa is the most dependent part in the abdomen if your patient is supine, if your patient is horizontal. Now you see here. Now this is not very apparent in this picture, but somewhat apparent. You see, there will be two clear zones. So this central dark zone is the abscess and the peripheral zone is the erythema peripheral zone is the erythema i'll erase and then probably it will become clear you see here can you see this peripheral zone this is what is called as the double target sign double target sign now you see because it is liquid fine so this would be hypodense when we compare it to the liver when we compare it to the liver fine you see subphrenic abscess can also reach the liver this is a typical pig tail catheter you might have to identify this in the examination fine pig tail catheter this is how the pig tail catheter will drain and this is how it looks this is how the tip of the pig tail catheter looks fine now what is this catheter make no mistake this is a malicot catheter this is not a pig tail catheter but this is a malicot catheter fine pigtail malicot fine pigtail and malicot now we move to the next thing there that next topic there quickly that is amoebic liver abscess this is common in tropics common in 
tropics. You know, we, we, we are a tropical country and we have many cases of amoebiasis coming up. Many cases of amoebiasis coming up. Fine. Again, I told you this is common in young men. Fine. So by the time, by the time your patient, by the time your patient uh, is having amoebic liver abscess, the intestinal infection is usually quiescent. Fine. So how do the bacteria reach? How do the amoeba reach here? They reach through the mesenteric vessel. They reach through the mesenteric vessel. So most common symptom there, most common symptom is pain. Most common symptom is pain. Naturally, your patient can also have fever. Your patient can also have fever. Fine. Fa patient can also have fever. Fine. So you can do ultrasound, CT scan, ELISA. Fine. When you do the aspiration, when you do the aspiration, this is what you notice. This is what you notice. Fine. What is that? NCOV sauce pus. NCOV sauce pus. The appearance is similar. Appearance is similar. But this is the odor odor which is most characteristic mc means most characteristic what are these which you see on the screen so these are flask shaped ulcer flask shaped ulcer in the colon flask shaped ulcer in the colon fine flask shaped ulcer in the colon you see now these are the mnemonics for uh, Amoebic liver abscess, A for amoebic liver abscess, A for NCOV sauce pus, ELISA, fine. Tropical country, more common in alcoholics, more common in alcoholic and usually this is solitary whereas the pyogenic liver abscess is usually multiple, usually multiple. Metronidazole is the main stray of treatment, is the main stray of treatment, fine. You see. This is the abscess in the left lobe. Abscess in the left lobe. Fine. Now, impending rupture. So, we see what is the treatment. Treatment basically is metronidazole. Metronidazole. Fine. We also need to give diloxinoid furo aid why because some of the amoeba may still be present in the lumen now we are going to do aspiration we are going to do aspiration if there is a big liver abscess with impending rupture if there is left liver lobe abscess you know important structures are nearby if the patient is pregnancy because here you cannot use metronidazole you cannot use metronidazole if the patient is having the clinical features of secondary infection if you are, the patient is having clinical features of secondary infection you see this is impending rupture see such thin it has become so it might rupture anytime most commonly it will rupture inside the peritoneal cavity only fine but it can rupture in the plural space also it can rupture in the plural space also see such a thin it has become so it might rupture anytime might rupture anytime fine now again you see there is uh, not much to remember here the only thing which you need to remember is the age fine only thing is that more commonly amoebic liver abscess is solitary amoebic liver abscess is solitary fine then here what is the most common lab anomaly elevated alkaline phosphatase in amoebic liver abscess the most common deranged abnormality is prothrombin time prothrombin time prothrombin time that is what you need to remember over here the differences between pyogenic liver abscess and the amoebic liver abscess amoebic liver abscess so we move to the next topic and by now you must have understood what topic we are going to discuss what topic we are going to discuss fine i'm sure you must have understood see i mean uh, <laughs> I'm actually not against, I'm actually not against people loving their pets, but then uh, I still believe that hygiene is supremely important. Hygiene is supremely important. Fine, because, you know, 
the dogs they carry multiple worms the dogs they might carry it's not that it, uh, they do carry they might carry multiple worms they might carry multiple worms fine now let's say <laughs> he got annoyed got annoyed fine so we are talking about the echinococcus 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 granulosus echinococcus granulosus fine now that is the next topic what is the next topic the next topic is high dated cyst high dated cyst fine so high dated cyst is caused by echinococcus granulosus most commonly it might be caused by echinococcus vogali it might be caused by multi locularis echinococcus multi locularis and that is the one which is responsible for causing malignant hydrated malignant hydrated means it's not related to malignancy but there are so many hydrated cysts and uh, however hard we try however hard we try to get rid of it we are not able to get rid of them we are not able to get rid of them right that is the malignant hydrated now we talk about the echinococcus granulosus so here you see the male female incidence is nearly equal male female incidence is nearly equal most common organ affected is liver followed by lungs basically hydrated cyst hydrated cyst can occur anywhere hydrated cyst can occur anywhere fine can occur anywhere fine it may also occur in the people who are uh, having you know a wild animal fine in, in that case it is caused by echinococcus oligarthus echinococcus oligarthus fine so if we talk about the echinococcus which is affecting the human most commonly fine so definitive host is the dog in which the sexual life cycle of the parasite is completed fine sheep is the intermediate host a sexual life cycle of the parasite man what is there it is the accidental dead end host I mean the parasite cannot be passed on to any other organism accidental dead end host man is the accidental dead end host fine so the eggs they are passed in the feces of the dog uh, you know due to poor hygiene they may enter the oral cavity they may enter the esophagus stomach ultimately in the duodenum they are absorbed as hexacanth larva they are absorbed as hexacanth larva right and then they develop in any part of the body they develop in any part of the body fine right? outermost layer outermost layer is ectocyst that is formed by the human tissue for example in the liver it could be formed by the compressed hepatic tissue fine right? then the Oh, sorry ectocyst i'm really sorry it's a part of the parasite fine the compressed human tissue i'm really sorry that is the pericyst fine and then there is the inner layer there is the inner layer i'll write it down more clearly here pericyst that is the compressed host tissue fine cyst outer part of the parasite outer part of the parasite not known fine that is why it is called as a dead end host endocyst that is the inner germinal inner germinal membrane inner germinal membrane inner germinal membrane so these three these three they form the parasite these three they form the parasite they form the cyst fine so the most common symptom symptom is the pain most common sign is 
facto majali the enlargement of the liver enlargement of the liver yes the investigation of choice here is elisa because not many of the patients will be infected by hydrated cyst fine so not many of the general population not many of the general population will have antibodies against the hydrated cyst fine so ultrasound so in ultrasound you see there are several signs several several signs one thing which you remember is the garvey classification garvey classification of the cyst just the name of it just the name of it fine garvey classification second thing second thing which you remember is the water lily signs you see these are the cyst water lily sign water lily sign is seen on ultrasound water lily sign is seen on ultrasound fine also sign, known as the sign of camelot so rarely you might get shashi tharoor kind of examination fine right? shashi tharoor kind of examiner so you must also remember this camelot sign fine right? now there are several other signs serpent sign when the membrane is totally detached fine honeycomb sign multiple cysts the roseate sign the cartwheel sign you don't need to remember all of these you don't need to remember all of these fine just remember i mean they might be important for neat pg that too that they're, they're not going this deep that too they're not going this deep fine but uh, this water lily sign you should always remember water lily sign you should always remember so it will show water lily sign fine now must remember the investigation of choice if there is suspected bile duct involvement so this happens to be ercp this happens to be ercp so the results are compared as dubbed as gold standard investigation gold standard investigation treatment is pair fine pair is puncture the cyst aspirate the contents fine inject a scoli sidal scoli sidal agent scoli sidal agent like you can inject uh, alcohol you can inject 20% saline 20% saline fine and then you do the re aspiration re aspiration you aspirate it out again fine what is the surgical treatment of choice surgical treatment of choice is peri cystectomy surgical treatment of choice is peri cystectomy peri cystectomy fine you can also do marsupialization marsupialization then you can also do omentoplasty but remember this is the preferred treatment this is the preferred treatment fine preferred treatment right now we move to the next thing that is the hemo bilia hemo bilia fine that means presence of blood in the bile presence of blood in the bile so most common cause is hydrogenic most common cause is hydrogenic see earlier it was caused by percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography but now it can be done when you're doing let's say papillotomy while you go out and do ercp at that time you may cause injury fine so the most common cause of blood in the bile it remains uh, hydrogenic fine other could be called stone other could be vascular lesion others could be the vascular lesions vascular lesion for example let's say angio dysplasia and naturally the other for example blunt and penetrating trauma both blunt and penetrating trauma both fine now here what you get to see is the twin case triad also known as the triad of sand loam triad of sand loam that is gastrointestinal hemorrhage colic and jaundice colic and jaundice fine what is the investigation of choice that happens to be angiography you want 
to localize you want to localize which area is bleeding so first investigation usually is endoscopy first investigation usually is endoscopy endoscopy fine first investigation usually is endoscopy fine treatment you can do embolization or you can do open surgery that's entirely up to you that's entirely up to your uh, clinical expertise fine now bilhemia that is a very very rare condition very rare condition that means uh, drainage or the entry of bile into the blood entry of bile into the blood fine bile into the blood so it could occur due to gallstone eroding into the portal vein gallstone eroding into the portal vein fine what are the clinical features which you expect the clinical features are rapidly increasing jaundice rapidly increasing jaundice jawahar ji please ask some question <laughs> please ask some question so ercp is the investigation of choice why because this could be post diagnostic as well as therapeutic as well as therapeutic let's say this is the normal bite blood now let's say it is blocked by a stone fine blocked by a stone when you do ercp fine you can remove this stone otherwise what will happen this will become like this fine so there will be increase in the pressure inside the bile duct when you remove this stone there will be decreased pressure and blood sorry bile leaking into the blood that condition will immediately stop that condition immediately will stop fine now Again, I told you it will be a concise class, so we are about to finish in around 10-15 minutes and then I'll take your queries. Fine. So benign tumors of the liver. Fine. So the most common is hemangioma and this is usually an incidental finding. This is usually an incidental finding. Fine. Now after you have diagnosed this has to be followed up so for follow up investigation of choice is ct scan investigation of choice is ct scan it may be associated with a syndrome what syndrome kasabak marit syndrome kasabak marit syndrome fine if the <laughs> If the tumor becomes more than seven cent, no, actually I like your queries. I like your queries, fine, because you know many other may have the doubts, but because of the pace of the lecture, they may miss on us. Fine. So if it is more than seven centimeter, then the treatment is e nucleation. Then the treatment is e nucleation. E nucleation. Hello, Abhishek ji, to be with you, buddy. Now. We move to the next thing there. We move to the next thing there. That is the focal nodular hyperplasia. Fine. So just consider it like this in simple terms. In simple term, just consider it like this. Let me just see if I can do the trick or not. Focal nodular hyperplasia. Let's say this yellow colored thing is the normal liver tissue. Is the normal liver tissue fine? Let's see if I can do it. Can you appreciate? There are some dark dots there, dark dots there. Fine. So, focal nodular hyperplasia is basically that thing only. Fine. There are some areas where there is too much of liver tissue understand this in simple term understand this in simple terms fine so this area has got just a second this area has got 
hepatocytes. This area has got hepatocytes. But most importantly, this area has got reticuloendothelial cells, that is the kuffer cells. They are not present either in hepatic adenoma or in hepatocellular carcinoma. So that is what differentiates focal nodular hyperplasia from other benign tumor. From other benign tumor, it usually occurs due to a vascular insult when there is some kind of uh, uh, decreased blood supply here in the past. So that might give rise to sudden spurt in their growth. Vascular insult usually occurs due to vascular insult. Fine. Now, it will give rise to hot spot on sulfur colloid scan. Yes, 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 yes. Fine. So, investigation of choice contrast CT will give rise to central stellate scar central stellate scar fine if you consider this to be a tumor if you consider this to be a tumor because you see then you can call it it is the second most common benign fine because here the management is just observation management is just observation you don't need to do any specific kind of treatment there fine now we move to the tumor which has some malignant potential some malignant potential that is hepatic adenoma so it is more common in females because this is associated with oral contraceptive use so it contains sheets of hepatocytes sheets of hepatocytes and no kuffer cells no kuffer cell that means no you know uh, reticulo endothelial cell clinically it may present with hepatomegaly and it may give rise to bleeding intra-abdominal bleeding so sometimes it is considered the most common non-traumatic cause most common non-traumatic cause of hemoperitoneum hemoperitoneum Fine, because this has got malignant potential, so the treatment is excision. Treatment is excision. Treatment is excision. Fine. Okay, so we move to the simplified version of hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatocellular carcinoma. So this naturally we know that it is common with the alcohol use it is common with the alcohol use hepatitis b and hepatitis c uh, dr sai devan i hope you guys don't uh, uh, mind me calling you by your name see any kind of tumor can be differentiated any kind of uh, tumor can be differentiated based on their absence based on the absence of reticulo endothelial cells you see focal nod uh, nodular hyperplasia will have epithelial cells of, uh, will have kuffer cells which are reticulo endothelial cells while the other tumors both malignant and uh, benign they will not have these cells they will not have these cells they will not have these cells fine hepatitis b and c aflatoxin thorough trust exposure now that was the contrast medium used in the past now excellent picture quality but it had thorium oxide fine so alpha 1 nt Trypsin deficiency, fine. Hemo chromatosis, hemo chromatosis, fine. Now, naturally, it is common in males, fine. Peak incidence occurs around 50 years of age. So, most common clinical feature will be hepatomegaly. Hepatomegaly, again, I told you. That uh, I mean, I was about to tell you that jaundice is a late sign. Jaundice is a late, late sign. Late sign. Fine. Now, here, most 
common paraneoplastic syndrome is hypoglycemia and if you see it in the lab most common paraneoplastic syndrome would be hyperlipidemia good evening dr subhash ji fine investigation of choice will be triple phase ct scan triple phase ct scan investigation of choice to confirm the diagnosis will be true cut biopsy investigation of choice for staging will be pet ct pet ct fine now the tumor markers are alpha fetoprotein alpha fetoprotein neurotensin and pivka neurotensin and pivka fine now what is the treatment if the cancer is localized then we will just do the resection fine otherwise we will totally remove it otherwise we will totally remove it fine so before doing any surgery we must check the child pug score and the meld score modified end stage liver disease modified end stage liver disease fine now chemotherapy chemotherapy available is sorafenib suniti nib fine rego rafenib rego rafenib dr jitwa shukla fine other are trans arterial chemo ablation ablation means to burn we can also use radio frequency ablation radio frequency ablation the prognostic systems are okuda system yeah 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 great you know jawahar ji uh, your inputs are actually very good your inputs are actually very good that's why you know i i want you to be a part of the discussion i want everyone to be a part of the discussion so if we make it just one way then uh, you know we won't be able to add the many things fine if we make it one way communication so better is that uh, if you also add some i like it of course and everyone else would also like it okuda system is a prognostic system most commonly the metastasis will go to the lungs metastasis will go to the lungs metastasis will go to the lungs fine now just a second now you know fibrolamella variety fibrolamella variety it has got a better prognosis it has got better prognosis and the tumor markers tumor markers like alpha fetoprotein may not be present may not be present it has got sheets of hepatocyte like please so it has got better prognosis it has got better prognosis that is what you need to remember that that is what you need to remember there right okay so that that brings us to the end of the topic of liver that brings us to the end of the topic of liver in the next concise class we'll discuss the gall bladder we'll discuss the rest of the bile ducts we'll discuss the rest of the hepatobiliary that is the pancreas pancreas and the associated condition pancreas and the associated condition thank you dr abhishek i'm i'm so glad at your words i'm so glad at your words fine so i would like to end the class but uh, we'll wait for a while so that i can have some of your queries some of your queries i'm so glad buddy i'm so glad and and then yesterday a few of you were talking about the ppt so what i'm going to do is in the end of this video when we are done with this video i'll add uh you know that google drive link you can download all my ppts from there you can download all my ppts from there every single ppt will be available every single ppt will be available you can download all of them and i hope you really like them i mean <laughs> at least some of it you'll like Thank <laughs> you.
I don't have the image of the central steelhead scar, but let me just show you. See, radiating. Oh, oh. see, it is radiating like this. Radiating in all direction. Radiating in all direction. See. Central stellate scar, cartwheel, spoke wheel, fine, whatever you want to call it. Sure, buddy, I can show you all the signs, why not? But you see, there are so many signs there, so many signs there, fine. Now, first, Garby classification, WHO classification, if you are doing neat PG, you have to revise all of them. You have to revise all of them here. If you don't want to remember too much of it, just remember Garby. Type 2 is water lily sign. Membrane is detached. Fine. See here. Water lily sign. Sorry. Water lily sign. See. The membrane is detached there. Fine. Roseate sign. Roseate sign. Multiple cyst. Multiple cyst. Serpent sign membrane is totally detached. Membrane is totally detached. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Honeycomb like or roseate like structure. Spoke wheel. See the roseate sign. Cartwheel appearance. See the cartwheel appearance. See the cartwheel appearance. Combo sign that is the presence of air fluid levels. Fine. Yarn of wool sign, but then that. Uh, So I haven't seen basically any of the signs being asked. But then, you know, they can ask you any damn thing. So that's why we have to keep them in the lectures. Fine. This, if you can remember, hail storm appearance. Hail storm appearance is an echinococcus multilocularis. Oh God, how did I forget this? So that is seen in malignant hydrated again this is important only for neat pg not so important for fmg floating membrane sign see here floating membrane is detached and it is freely floating pearl sign there could be any sign there could be hundreds of the signs there Cyst within the cyst. So many of them. So many of them are there. Fine. That that is in the dead cyst. That is in the dead cyst. That is there in the dead cyst. That is there in the dead cyst. Right. So I'll just end the class and uh, please do check in the comment section that uh, maybe by uh, today evening only or maybe by tomorrow morning you'll find the link. You'll find the link, you know, because we have to seek permission from sir and uh, then I'll share all the all my slides there. Google Drive link will be there. You can download it. You can download it. Right. So thanks for now. Good night. Good night all.